Okay, this is part 14 in the series of the Blender Game Engine tutorial. So in this lesson, we're going to add a counter to the scene. Now this is more of an intermediate to advanced lesson because I was looking at the logic bricks and right off the bat I didn't really see anything that looked intuitive and easy to implement. So I implemented this in Python code. And since that's how I work typically all the time, it was, it was just a quick and easy way for me to do it. And since some of you will want to program in Python anyway in the future, it's probably not a bad way to get started. So let's just take a look. So it's, we're going to look at the logic bricks for the cube. And this was pretty much what we had before. We had the keyboard that was, every time you press the right arrow key, it was incrementing the, the counter by a value of 10 over here. And then we had the, when it reached a value of 50, we have to follow the chain, came over here, and that put it in motion in the positive y direction. And when it reached 70, it put it in motion in the negative y direction. I think I moved those around, the location of those. And then this one, let me see, this was rotation in the z-axis, and that occurred, oh, that was on the earlier attempts when the uh, collision detection occurred. Okay, so now instead of using this counter, I'll leave it in here for a moment, because we'll, actually, we'll need it in here, but to actually display something on the screen, I'm using something else. I have this keyboard, and notice I have another line out of here, and it's tied into this type of controller. It's a Python controller is what that is right there. It says Python. And this is the name of the Python script that I'm going to be using called counter display. I clicked on it and it's called counter display. So we'll go take a look at that. And let's see, here's the, uh, where is it? It's right here. So here's the code. All you need to do is type the code in. I'm not going to explain it in any detail within these lessons because I either um, I have a whole s series on Python tutorials, and I'll eventually get around to the game engine as well, but that's where I teach the Python programming. It, it can be a little bit complicated, but uh, just type it in like this. You don't need the green lines for the comments if you don't want, but what you do need to make sure is that this is one tab, and that's two tabs. The tabs are critically important in order for the script to run properly. But essentially, and there's, I had to do some things in here to make it work. I increment it by 5 in here, and that's because, instead of 10, because that's because in here it's picking up on the key when you press it down and you let it up. So I had to do it twice, essentially, in order to do it. All right, well, so that's, that's the code, and you notice in this text file down here, it has to be named counter display, or it can be named whatever you want it to be named when you enter it in here like this, but when you go back into your logic bricks, you have to make sure that you pick that named one right there. And one last thing is if you don't know how to get into that from the up in here where we're using default game logic, I'm in the scripting mode for that here. And that's how I was able to, when you usually come up, it'll come up as a, uh, it'll look like that, it'll look blank like that and then you can start typing it in from there and giving it a name just by clicking in the box like this okay all right so I'll get rid of that one I don't need that one and I'll go look at the counter display right there all right so that's the code that's running and then in the scene what we need we need an object and this is a text object I called it cube text but to do it you just within the display you add an object and it's just a text object like that all right so when it's in there it allows you to you know I can actually control the events of the count of the text like this now the other thing I had to do was I had to leave where is this let's see oh, associated with this, this one here I had to leave this counter in here as well because it's distinct. This is a property called cube count, right, that's within here, but that's distinct from what I'm checking for within that text file, which I have a different variable set up in there that I'm using as well. So then what happens is when we run the program like this 
and I press the right arrow key. Remember this this sphere, blue sphere, is just independent because it has its own right arrow key set up, so it's acting separately. So this was when it got up to 50, it started moving, then at 60 it stopped, and then at 70 it moved back the other direction. All right, so let's do it again. So it's just every time I press the right arrow key, it's incrementing it by 10. And then it comes back. So there's really two things going on here. One is that it kind of shows how they're kind of interconnected. Well, they're very interconnected. Is that one is that I'm using the keyboard in here, and in one case, I'm incrementing it by 10, the counter in here, and then I'm checking it over here if it gets to 50 or 70. And when I do it, does this kind of stuff in here. And how, but the other case is that. It's when I'm in here, I'm also, um, this is getting passed through that routine. I call this this routine each and every time, and then I'm changing the text value actually in here. Here's the actual name of the text right here. Is cube text. So I get the object, and I put it into a variable called display counter, and then I modify the parameters of the display counter, at least the text parameters right here. And I change the value like that. So I'm having to do one inside the code and one inside the game properties to make it work. And when that's actually not uncommon because typically when I just program in the uh, Python code only, every once in a while I'm implementing a logic brick in there, but not so often. Just, I mean, every once in a while. Whereas in this case, it's the opposite way around. All right, well, hopefully that gives you some ideas and that should help you out if you're, you know, trying to build something. I'll I'll maybe look at it and see if I can find a, a quick and easy way to do it within the logic, logic bricks only. But for some of you, I'm sure you won't mind looking at a little bit of Python code. But So check out the Python tutorials. Alright, well that's it for this lesson, and I'll see you in the next lesson.